Hello, this is the Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Belushi 556. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing a San Martin SN0017, and is wearing my Skimmy 1717. Grogu said he was going to wear this Belushi watch to the Jedi Academy toga party. I said, toga party? You all wear robes anyway. How are togas going to be any different? Are you sure Master Skywalker said toga party? Well, he said he wanted a party where he gets three sheets to the wind. All right, let's look at the watch. The watch did not come in a box. It just came with this little card. This watch says Belushi 1853, which I doubt uh, Belushi was around in 1853. But this card says Belushi 1988. That seems a little bit more realistic, although... <laughs> I kind of doubt they've been around since 1988 either. But that seems more plausible than 1853. I have a feeling they sent me the wrong card anyway. Because I see that it mentions leather strap. And the last Belushi I had had a leather strap. Then it says also original Japan movement. See leather band refined steel. That's not this watch. A while back, a Chinese watch dropshipper reached out to me asking if I would review one of his watches. I said sure, so he sent me a list of watches to choose from, all pretty much in the very affordable price range. I picked one and they responded that it wasn't available and suggested another. I said sure and never heard from them again. This Belushi showed up in my mail a little later, which is not the watch they suggested, but since I didn't order it, I assumed they sent it. So I shot an unboxing video, then asked them to send me a link that they wanted me to put in it when they proposed this. And, uh, well, the person I worked with totally ghosted me, so I ended up never publishing the unboxing video because I said I was including a link that they never sent me. Not sure if the guy was fired for sending me a watch. Well, for this review, I'll just apply a few AliExpress links and hope it is the right one. So anyway, this watch was sent to me for free, and I do not have to return it, but I can't tell you who sent it. It's not a very expensive watch and I would put it in the ultra affordable range, but I will mark it as a sponsored video. And by the way, this is my first free watch, although it's about a $12 watch. The watch is 38.4 millimeters at the bezel, but 42 millimeters if you measure at the case. 48.7 millimeters lug to lug. It's only 10 millimeters thick, so it's pretty thin. It has a 20 millimeter lug width. And weighs 105 grams on the surprise bracelet with three links removed. And here's the three links. We have a smooth bezel with gold coating on top. But it's uh, silver polished on the side. Then we have a dial with a pretty good sunburst effect. The, I wish the blue was a bit deeper though. It sure doesn't look like the blue in the ad. Then we have a chapter ring with minute markers. And then we have Roman numeral indices. And typical watch, they have the four as four ones rather than an IV. I think it's so it doesn't confuse it with the six. That seems to be a watch tradition. Then we have fence post hands and they're loomed except for the second hand is not loomed and there's no counterbalance or lollipop or anything. The second hand seems to hit most of the marks so it does a pretty good job there. So if you have the quartz movement OCD this shouldn't set it off. Then it has the blue sheet name and I don't see a logo anywhere on the literature, so I don't think they have a logo. Now, once again, it says 1853, and it is not. <laughs> they haven't been around since 1853. Then we have a date with a border. The date looks a little short, though. I just wish the window was a bit taller. Things seem a little scrunched in. The crown is a push-pull because you only get the basic 30 meters water resistance, but it's pretty loosey-goosey. And also, when you go to press it in, when you go to set it, it's 
Sometimes you get a minute hand jump. So you got to be really careful. I, I found with this one, though, you can basically, if you hold the crown when you push it in, you can get it to set without jumping. And I've been able to repeat that several times. So just make sure you hold the crown and push it in and you can set it. Then we have a mineral glass. It seems, yeah, it's flat. No dome. Yeah, no dome. And then the case is chrome-plated alloy. But look at the case shape, though. It's a, it's a nice shape. The lugs curve down pretty good, but not too much. And so it fits on the wrist good. Plus, it's a fairly thin case. Yeah, it's a quartz movement. They can do that with the quartz. But still, 10 millimeters is a good thickness. I think anything thinner would be too thin. So, yeah, I like the case. I like the shape of it. Then the case back, we have a press-on case back because once again, you get the 30 meters water resistance. And it has a little uh, map of the North Pole for some reason. I don't know what the significance is, but that's what they have. Then it says 30 meters, number 556, which is the model number. Then it says stainless steel back, which is another good tell that the case is not stainless steel. Since this card here said Japanese movement, I went ahead and popped the case back. And it looks like we have an SL28, which is definitely not a Japanese movement. That's a Chinese made movement. And that's one of the standard ones you're going to find in quartz watches of this price range. Not that Chinese movements are always worse than Japanese movements anyway. There's a few really bad Japanese movements like Seiko makes the TMI PC21S. And if I, it's in a watch I'm reviewing next. And if I handed you both watches and said, guess which one has a Japanese movement, you wouldn't be able to guess. The bracelet is hollow and it has hollow end links. Now the end links, so they're in the, in the watch really good, but where the end links attach to the bracelet, there's quite a bit of wobble on both sides. But the links themselves, though, don't wobble. I mean, the links themselves are really good. It's just where they attach to the end links. And, of course, they're not fully articulating. Then we have a butterfly clasp. It's not signed, but at least it's a push button and not a friction. There's a little bit of wobble to the clasp, too, but it's not bad. Here's the watch and my seven and a half inch wrist. Like I said, the, the way the lugs are shaped and the shape of the case, it wears nice and flat. So it's comfortable. And uh, yeah, it has a butterfly clasp, but it looks like I can get the perfect fit from this clasp. And even if I had to wear it a little bit loose, it's only a hundred gram watch. So it's, it's, it's okay to wear it a little bit loose. Here we are in the loom room. A watch at this price is not going to have good loom, but the AliExpress ad says super luminous, so let's test it anyway. As we speed up the time, we see it is anything but super. The indices are already gone. At least the hands are a little bit better. What do I like about this watch? Well, I like the shape of the case. I like the fact that the second hand hits the, most of the marks. And I don't think the bracelet is too bad considering the price of the watch. And it's plenty long. Like I said, I had to remove three links. So you'll be able to wear this if you have an eight and a half inch wrist. What are my gripes and groans? Loose crown action makes the watch hard to set. The date window needs to be a bit taller. And the end link connections are a bit wobbly. Do I recommend this watch? Sure. It's not a great watch, but it is a pretty good $12 watch. I enjoyed wearing it. If you like the looks of this watch, go for it. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Belushi 556, and I will be back with another review. I have, I'm so far behind on my reviews, so I'm going to try to catch up. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.